Go download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. wasn't just random improvising, I was actually using what I call a moldable lick. Uh, it's a little concept that really changed the way I was approaching soloing completely and it changed my results massively, just almost overnight. Why does this work so well? Well, the, the main reason is that 20% of all that you do when you practice soloing, the technique practicing, the scales and arpeggios, all of that, 20% of those activities really make up 80% of your results. There's a guy named Wilfredo Pareto who made up that principle once. And, um, but it's really true when you look at it. And so if you ask yourself, all, with all that I do, what's really the 20% that makes up the 80%? And in my experience, it's really going very basic, going to the fundamentals. And that's not the most exciting thing, but it really is. Because if you look at all the flashy stuff, the fast, the legato stuff, all the, the, the cool stuff we want to play, you know, uh, then the prerequisite for playing that, for using that in a solo, is that we have that basis under control. Being able to play a solo with just a few notes is really the, the prerequisite of being able to use all the flashy stuff. And the same thing goes for sports, right? If you're on a football, in a football match, and you have limited skills, what you're going to do is you're going to naturally focus on what you can do to make a difference. You're not going to do all kinds of flashy stuff, as we talked about in the previous video. And the same thing goes here. Once you get down to basic basics and really get what you're doing and you, you and you um, make sure that you can produce that solo then confidence will just come to you like it, you'll be just you know bulletproof on stage once you can do that because you know you can get the job done and I see a lot of people you know would have reasonable technique and do some fast stuff and they play all kinds of uh, things and they you know a lot of scale shapes and they've been playing for like you know five or six years and but it's, it just sounds not right. It just They sound like an amateur, and I did too. And then when I asked them, what, what are they doing? They say, well, well, I'm practicing and I'm getting better. And I guess, you know, in 10, 12 years, I'll be really good. But it doesn't take 10 or 12 years to get there. It's, it, it, you know, it takes six months to learn. Once you're in beginning intermediate, you've got that basic technique under control and you're just a one basic scale shape. It takes you almost no time to get there if you focus on it. So you can plow through. You have all these different things you can practice and you should practice practice all these things, you know, the techniques, the scales, the arpeggios, all of those skills, but then make it a project to plow through it all and to just take one thing and become really incredibly good at that. And I was like, you know, when I was overwhelmed, when I started out really wanting to be good at, become good at soloing, I'm going to show you something very practical in a second here, so just hang on. When I wanted to become very good, I just saw all these skills I had to master. And I was like, I was, you know, on my sixth month of just trying to master alternate picking, and I was like, okay, then we got legato, hammer-ons and pull-offs and all kinds of techniques and scale shapes, and I'm never going to reach the point where I can use that fluently. And so I decided, luckily, to just take a little thing and then bring that to absolute mastery. I did that with my technique, just took a three note pattern and played it and said, okay, I'm going to play this and I'm going to learn to play this until I reach the absolute outer limit of what is humanly possible or I'm going to die trying, right? That's half, that's half of my practice schedule, just those three notes. And I took just one little area of one little pentatonic shape and just 
four notes and said, okay, I'm going to learn to play a cool solo just there with bending, sliding, vibrato, everything. So I can just entertain people for 16, 32 bars without them getting bored out of their mind. Because, and then I want to not just do it. I want to become totally, utterly, you know, the best in the world at it. I didn't want to have that come out as being an amateur. I wanted to have that, just that little place there come out as just being a total pro. You know, and then I could have all kinds of other stuff that I really couldn't play, but I just wanted to, to be able to go on stage and just play these four notes and, and people will say, okay, he's got that totally under control. You know, the BB King example, as we talked about in the previous video. If you haven't watched that, please do so. So what I really came up with at that time was a moldable lick. It's really, you could say, a little lick that's very flexible. It's got different ingredients and you can mix them up as you want. There's rhythm in it, there's bending my body, whatever, and you can mix that and change it and have fun with it over 16 or 32 bars without it being boring. And I'm going to show you close up in a second just a little example of that so you can do it yourself. But then what I, what I recommend that you do is focus on that because that is the prerequisite. Being able to do that is the prerequisite of being able to use fast stuff let me give you an example here in a second, because once you have that under control, you can really, you can play with yourself. Let me just show you. So we have this jam track that you can also download. Just push the link if you're on YouTube underneath the video. Say so I have this. I have that going for me, that little moldable link. That Right? It's the same thing I'm playing all the time. I'm just pushing it around rhythmically and mixing it up. Once I have that going, I can practice playing a little of this and then playing some legato stuff in between. So first I take, you know, a couple of bars for this. the confidence, you know, with people on stage and with myself, I can start playing around and getting getting out of my comfort zone, getting out of what I'm really, really professionally good at because I've been focusing on it like an insane person, you know, for months. And then I can start, you know, integrating my fast stuff, my legato stuff. But before I have that foothold, before I can really do something very, very, very well, I cannot go beyond that, right? So once you know that you have these three skills, you can really kick the ball and you can really hit your target. Um, you can really, you have two, you know, ways of, of getting rid of an opponent when you want to get past them or whatever. Once you have that, those skills down at the level of a professional, you can use them all the time. And then you can start, you know, expanding into something different. And if you do this, your development will soar and you'll get the self-confidence of knowing that you sound like a professional instead of being the eternal amateur. And some people are eternal amateurs. In fact, most people who play guitar remain amateurs all their life. Whenever they pick up their guitar and play, they sound like amateurs. And I'm sorry, but the reason why I'm saying this is to have you step out of that by focusing, right? So what I recommend that you do is just the little licks I'm going to show you, which is really one multiple licks that I'm going to show you. Focus on that. Sit down with your guitar in front of your TV. First, you practice them. You might even use a metronome. You practice them over and over again. Right? And then you take them, you play them all the time. Whenever you pick up your guitar, you spend 10 minutes just playing. You know, you keep on doing it over and over and over again. And instead of focusing on a lot of things, you focus in on that. And you can practice the other things as well but you practice like two or three hours in front of the TV. You, you talk to friends because you come, become so good at it until it's just a blah, blah habit. It's just blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's just blah, blah. It doesn't me mean anything. But when you focus on it and you use it when you play music, suddenly it's music because you have that, you put emotions into it. And then you don't have to fake the funny looks on your face. You don't have to go, you know, uh, try to look like a professional. Now you actually do it because you have total confidence. It's totally automatic to you. And suddenly you find yourself looking like an idiot when you play because you're all into it, right? But the, the only way to be all into it is for the playing to be absolutely effortless, absolutely easy. And that's the level we want to get to. And the only way to get to it is by focusing on a little and then plowing through all the clutter so that you get that competency. And once you have that, everything will change. All the little stuff that you used to consider really hard and, and it, it looked like it was impossible to reach that level where you could integrate all your techniques, all that's going to be very, look very different from that perspective of being on the top of the mountain, right? So just, you know, and this is two, three, four months it takes to really get those four notes under control. So please focus. Right? Okay, so let's, let me just um, show you the little moldable lick here, and then you can download the jam track and just start practicing, right? And in the beginning, when you practice, don't focus on rhythm. Just focus on getting the notes down. Just focus on, on getting, getting it right, and then you start uh, adding the rhythm, adding the metronome or the jam track. So you do one thing at a time. Let's look at the moldable lick, and then let's start focusing on it. And you are going to play this differently than me, so don't, don't be afraid that you're just going to sound like me once you have that up and running, because you're going to do different things with it intuitively, I promise you. So let's look at it, download the jam track, and I'll see you in another free video. Uh, or you might go and check out my new program um, on my website. There'll be a link just below this video, and you can go more deeply into these concepts, this process of really getting results quickly uh, in this area by focusing on a few things that will make all the difference. <laughs> So this is actually going to be a pretty chaotic process because I haven't pinpointed this into little licks anymore because it's so such a long time ago that I learned it. But when I did, I, I had a little uh, you know system for myself here. And what we're going to do first is you're going to first focus on the fact that we have our first uh, position major pentatonic here. Oh, minor pentatonic, sorry. So you have to get that into your fingers first. You have minor thirds on the two lower strings. 5th fret with your 1st string all the time, then whole tone intervals on the G, the D, and the A string. From the 5th fret here, we're in, we're in A, and then 5 and, and uh, uh, 8 on the low E string again. And so what, you, what you're working with here is basically the area just around the G and the D string here. Right? And we have two notes here on the G string that we can bend, and we can bend that uh, that D there on the G string in the seventh fret, we can bend that up to the to a whole note, and you can support with all three fingers here if you want to, and you can bend it up to the blue note if you're playing over minor here, and you can do different bending styles. I'm going to be pretty quick here when I go through these. You can do you can do a slow bend. You can do a fast bend. That's just, and I'm muting all the strings and 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 having that attack there. Sorry for the the noise. So you have to practice that first. So you become very good at that, and then you do the same thing with the with the first finger here. You bend slowly. And you bend fast, and you, you, you practice stuff like, or you go and stop it on the top, and then play another note. And you, you might want to just stop the video here, just to pu pull out little things from this, and then practice it over and over again. There's another thing here, I'm playing these two notes here. I'm muting both of them on the on the D string in the five and seven here. And then I'm playing this uh, this is all about sound really. And I'm playing the seventh fret on the on the G string. 
vibrating doing a pinch harmonic. So we're getting the muted sound. And then the open sound of the loose string. So I'm pole muting down here. And then I can do, you know, and do vibrato here. I can do vibrato here. Not so much down here, actually. Let me just play that slowly. Just a little idea I came up with just now, right? And you can play on that round with this yourself. Just let's say you're just focusing on the pinch harmonic and the vibrato on these two notes. Right? And then you just you mute these and then you can go just three notes, seven, uh, or five, seven on, on the G string, and then just uh, five and pitch harmonic and vibrato, and or you go all the way up to the to the seventh fret. Then you go back again. Perhaps with the pitch harmonic solo. All the way. So you do all kinds of stuff like that. You do a pinch harmonic and you bend it up. Or you bend up and do vibrato on the top there as in the bend. And you have to play around with this and really, you know, focus on these notes and and You know, bend up and do vibrato on the top there. And you again you can take out these little bits of the video. I did that back then. I only had a VHS tape with no tap, so or do the ecstatic, uh, uh, you know, heavy metal vibrato, you know, vibe vibrato, and do all kinds of things. Then you can introduce sliding it instead of bending up to that note. You can slide up to it, or you can slide down from the seventh to the fifth. Again. Right? And then once you have control over that, you can start really, you know, playing it over and over again. So you go. And play around with the muting and the vibrato and the pinch on money. You know, hit the note, hammer on. I hit it with a pinch harmonic, and then I hammer it on right away. Every time you come up with a good idea, you practice it over and over again, and you keep on doing that. Focus on this little area like an insane person. Or you can see yourself just in front of the TV for an hour, just go... So that's really it. This is a moldable uh, lick here, and it's very messy right now. Uh, like I'm sitting beside you in a hallway in a high school and just showing you stuff, right? But this is the concept. And then you put on the jam track and you have fun. Let me see if I can just do that. Uh, my voice should be should be remote right now. Let me see if I can put on my headphones and have some fun.
now to go to the octave above that. Uh, the fingering changes a little bit, but that's it.